Yeah, well, listen, maybe it's a good time to jump into what we've what one of the other topics of the day, which was sort of the media and how they're um, talking about and treating uh, the Ukraine issues at the moment. Now, we've used this clip once before this week, but I want to play it again, and there's some other things we're going to add to it. Uh, there is a conversation going on. It is much of, or I say much, some of the reporting coming out of the West about Ukraine. Um, well, let's be honest and just say racist, because comments like this are being broadcast live on channels like CBS. This isn't a place, with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. So it's partly human nature, but they are not in denial. So it's uh, that's, that's pretty ugly, you know? I mean, so they're white. I mean, it's, it's basically white. How is this happening here? All oh, my cameras just shut off. I'll, go, I'll fix that in a second. Um, the other thing is I'll put up, what I'll do is I'll put up another clip now and that'll give me a chance to uh, fix up my camera. This kind of hurts me a little bit to my heart because, oh, my camera's come back. Um, because this is one of my favorite comedians, one of my favorite performers. Um, and it's he's not a news commentator, obviously, but there's this thought going out there that how can this be happening in a place that could impact me? How could this be happening in a place where they've lived all their lives, kind of ignoring the fact that in Baghdad or in the Sudan or other places, they've also lived all their lives and it's been happening for a long time. Let me play this clip and then I'll sort my camera out. Here we go. I've never before really considered that a war could end up actually physically affecting the yeah. UK. And that's still a, that's a huge long shot. We're a huge distance away from it. That's a huge kind of leap of kind of logic that this could. But that's made me and people I meet very scared. And we talk about how scared we are with this kind of thing. And you think, and that's a kind of minor kind of chance. But there's these people who are actually being affected by this now in the city they've lived in, in the city they've grown up in. And, the and it's happening now as we're being broadcast. That's about all we need of that. So uh, this realisation that this is happening now, like this is happening now, whereas you could arguably say that at any second of any day of the week for the last hundred years, and it being war going on, conflict going on in a city where people live has been happening now. Um, there's one other thing, and sorry to take up so much time, Mark, but I will put it out there because it's kind of more of an official response. And that's the Arab and Middle Eastern Journalists Association pointed out that some comments by Western journalists, that wasn't a journalist, the last one, but two, two ago were, uh, either privileged the Ukrainians' Caucasian race or economic status, contrasting them with people from the Middle East or North African countries. So maybe more of now like an official word coming out going, hey, we can see this happening as well. Um, as, as I've always kind of said, not tongue in cheek completely, but slightly, you are sort of an expert in racism and that's where your studies is. And you're now uh, a doctorate of peace and conflict studies or a doctor of peace and conflict studies. Again, I, I, this has been a fantastic show because I've been the dumbest in the room every single time. And I just want to sit back and just give you the floor and see what you want to say about this whole thing. <laughs> I, I don't know if I, if I have anything to say that hasn't been said by other people. Um, so I think we see multiple things. This notion of um, they look just like us. I think that's one. And, then, and the other one is the proximity, the proximity of the war to the rest of you know Europe. Um, and I want to like point to a flaw in how like Western countries liked it. And I categorize that like just blatant statement um how they like to think about warfare so the uk obviously has been at you know um, had troops in iraq like the us is at war in a number of nations around the world um other european countries were involved in the in the invasion of iraq and afghanistan so these european countries are at war they have been for decades in other nations but somehow because the war isn't happening on their territory they're telling themselves that they haven't been at war um so i think that's an, that's a really important one um for us to consider and then the other one is um that people now suddenly understand the horrors of, of warfare so i find in some ways i actually want to see more of how we've been covering ukraine i mm. want you know the, the media to focus on that war needs to be avoided 
you know, like it's it's not something that we should we wish upon anybody. It's showing us, you know, images of people, and it's very compelling how that story is told. Um, so I actually want, I say, more of that compassion, you know, more of this outrage when we look at warfare, um, more support for people who are impacted by war who have to flee. So what is what is kind of hard to process as a person, um, you know, who's kind of like European and from the Middle East at the same time, is yeah. knowing that at the at the Polish border, um, we know that throughout this entire winter, so Northern Hemisphere winter, people have been freezing to death, right? Families, children, women, people are freezing to death because they couldn't cross the border. And we're talking about Afghan refugees, Syrian refugees um, who've been there for months. Um, and then for me to see that we see a nation at war and our humanity kicks in and we have these processes as, um, so you can take the train now for free. All of the, like lots of European nations are allowing free train travel for anybody who manages to get on a train. Um, they're taking people through from the Ukraine to Poland all the way to Germany. Um, they're put in place policies to process people really quickly and give them three years um, as of now, like people come as refugees from, you know, we're fleeing war in, in, in the Ukraine. So it just shows us it's possible. Like the mm. same Europe that for for years, for years has been saying we don't have space. Um, the same Europe where where people are dying in the Mediterranean Sea, which is the deadliest, the deadliest border in the world um, every day. Um, we now see that that, that Europe is, has the capacity, has the capacity to act in, in, in line with, you know, the values that it says it has. Um but we also see that there's this this is only extended to ukrainians to certain ukrainians right so not everybody who's fleeing ukraine is being granted the same the same compassion so i'm thinking about international students who've been trying to leave who've yep. been held at the border many of whom don't have proper identification on them because so there's and i'm just citing it from things that i've read in the news is so that people did not have their passports at home some people had their documentation at the university um, and they just packed up their stuff and they're now finding themselves um, being kicked off trains, not being allowed to, to board on, on trains. But if they get onto a train and make it to a border, um, they're not allowed to cross. Um, activists in, Ber in Berlin who are mobilizing to receive hundreds and thousands of people who are coming from the Ukraine were um, reporting yesterday that they had called um, the, the German police um, and they were telling them that the trains are delayed because the German police has been given an order to check all the black people on the train, right? And not and, and ask them to, to um, get off the train. So like, you know, and, and, and bringing these to like, pointing to the hypocrisy, I think cannot be framed as people not wanting um, to stop the war. You know, I think this, we need to be really cautious. People will say, hey, hold on. You're concerned about warfare. You don't want children dying. Okay, that's great. Like, what about all these other places? I always like to tell people, it's not about us saying don't show compassion to a population who's experiencing warfare. It's the opposite of that. You know, it's actually asking people to be responsible and accountable to the things that they say. Um, so if they say, you know, nobody should experience war, well, then that goes for Syrians, that goes for Yemenis, it goes for Palestinian yeah. people. Um, and when companies tell us, oh, we have a strong no politics policy and it's OK now to show political messages when it's in, in, against the war in Ukraine, you know, like, I think it's, it's important that we point that out. But it's really revealed something that most people who are from Yemen, Palestine, Syria have known for a very long time. Um, and I would probably, I, I would have to add like a lot of conflicts that happens in the African continent that is, you know, sometimes not classified as war because it's, you know, classified as armed conflict as if that somehow makes makes it better. Um, is that some people care, like we we care more about some people than others. And then this, this example has made it so explicit. Like people are telling us to our face, right? Like it's different because they are like us. Um, and I think partially it is maybe because they are like them. I don't know. I think it has also a lot to do with who the supposed enemy is. Um, yeah. And I think, I, yeah. I, 
we're what you've been saying is that we, I mean, just confirming what you're saying because we've spoken to Tom much twice this week. So we've had a correspondent, correspondent. We've had we've spoken to a Kiwi journalist in the Ukraine twice this week, and he was also saying exactly what you're saying about people being denied at the border, uh, apparently based on race. Mm-hmm. Like if they weren't, or they weren't, weren't Caucasian Ukrainians, they were getting stopped and and frisked a lot more and denied a lot more. Whether it's because they weren't. Ukrainians, or whether even if they were Ukrainians, but of African ancestry, they were going on. Now, hey, our producer George is, is a bit of an expert. He's uh, studied a lot around the areas of the Ukraine. He's sitting there waiting, pushing all the buttons in the background, looking after us. Um, and George, I see you've jumped your screen up. You got something you want to add into this? Yeah, this was a this. Someone made a great point the other day about um, something that you guys have just been discussing. Really, uh, the fact that you know, the uh, footballers in the past or other sports people would get fined or even lose their their jobs for displaying, for example, Palestinian flags. I also wanted to point out that the, the, the comedian guy who was talking about, you know, um, uh, speculating about how the UK could get affected by uh, war in Europe and this sort of thing, you know, we... we don't have to it's it's not too much of a stretch to realize that um western foreign policy has affected everyday people in europe with with blowback from the war on terror and and, and these sorts of things right that you know that europe was basically you know under attack by isis as a consequence of years and years of of intervention uh in the middle east and 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 these sorts of things so yeah people i guess have a a, a sort of uh, narrow um a narrow world view sometimes when it when it comes to these sorts of things the other thing that really interests me with this stuff is the is basically the spectating of war for entertainment yeah. in the west um and you know i think you know that this just one more tweet here pat because this is just mind-blowing uh, and beyond parody, John Cena, who plays this character Peacemaker, yeah, who is meant to be a parody of American uh, sort of attitude that they are world the world police. You know, meant, you know he's very violent, and you know he he, but he uh, it's basically a parody of of America as the world police as doing violence uh, for pe- for making peace. But it, that seems to have totally gone over his head, uh, where he says here, if I could somehow summon the powers of a real life peacemaker, I think this would be a, a great time to do so. Somehow it, totally missing like the, the point of parody. Yeah, it'd be like the guys from South Park coming out and going and being serious, going, hey, it's time for Team America Will Police to come and fix this problem up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 